nervous. And why I wasn't nervous? Because uh, I've done so many other events that now the stage uh, is my natural place. Mm -hmm. I feel at home when I'm on stage. At the beginning, terrifying, uncomfortable, nerve-wracking. But after 50, 60 events, then I actually start enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> And those have always been a bit of a showman. So I think I'm a big believer on playing on, on your strengths. And uh, there are people that hate being on stage and they hate being at the center of the attention. And for them, it's a bit more difficult to uh, become, to, to get e this ease of being on stage. There are people that already are, they like the spotlight. I love the spotlight. So on this other note, I'm very lucky as well that uh, is the right career for me. It just makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that I think that makes a huge difference, right? When you're aligned with what what it is you want to do in the world, it just it'll come forward for you. And yeah, it can be nerve wracking at first. It can be scary. And just getting comfortable being in that uncomfortable position, it then starts to feel like home. And I think that's the biggest thing there. Like it's it's so true. Once you're on and it's it's just for anybody listening that has never been on stage, it really is once you're like if you're called for a stage, once you're on that stage, it's as if the world just kind of comes together for you and yeah. nothing else matters. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. And and there are also other people that might be listening and say, well, lucky you, Simone and Natasha, you love doing that stuff. Uh, what about me? I don't like being the center of the attention. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Then uh, it's about you. It's your choice. Do you want speaking uh, and events to be part of the way you grow your business? If I would recommend yes, <laughs> because <laughs> it's uh, the best way to grow a business, in my opinion. Oh, yes. But... You always take your time. Do trainings. Like I've done a lot of training as well. And I've seen people that they were shy. They wouldn't talk to anyone. They go on stage. They do their bit. And then they go off stage and still don't talk to anyone. And they are happy with that. So find your way as a speaker. This is the most important thing when you're starting out. Oh, yeah. And you'll like you'll have your own style, right? Like you just said. it's And you'll find it. You'll find what your style is. Uh, you pretty much just described my husband to a T. <laughs> he's, uh, he's the most quietest person ever. And then you get him on stage. And we started with B&I to get him into doing like five minute segments right. in front of about yeah. 20, 30 people, right? Just to get used to it. And it was funny how like he had never spoken on stages or anything even close to that before. Got him in front of, you know, 20, 30 people, gave him a microphone and a, and a PowerPoint presentation, and he just loved it. Went to town, absolutely loved it. But you meet him on the street, and he's like the quietest person you'll ever know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You find a lot of great speakers that are actually introvert. Yeah, and he didn't know he would like it. And that's the thing, if you're listening <laughs> and you've never tried it, try it. Like, why not? Just give it a go and see, because it, honestly, his story, he loves speaking now. Absolutely loves it. <laughs> and he's he now holds classes and events and everything all the time. Like he's growing so much just from starting small and now just building up. That's brilliant. <laughs> yep. So I know one of the things that I really want to get to talk with you is you teach quite a bit on converting from stage. Yep. How what how do you do it? What do you like? What's your secret sauce? I would love to know <laughs> <laughs> the secret so the my secret sauce this is my secret sauce is practice <laughs> that's the secret sauce and that is no is not sexy and that no is not uh, appealing spending hours and hours rehearsing your pitch however that's the thing that makes the difference between someone that goes on the stage and converts and someone that goes on stage and bombs it Mm. And let me expand on this. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need to have the right practice. Because if you don't know what you're doing when you're selling from the stage, you don't have the right product, you don't have the right sequence, the right pitch, the right testimonials, then it's going to be very difficult. So first of all, you need to put in place a few things. You need to have a good product and a good service. My recommendation is uh, to start to start selling that service one by one to one before going on selling from the stage because uh, 
when you're selling one by one, you can sell having a conversation. You can understand what the other person wants. You can understand also what the other person doesn't want. Mm -hmm. But when you're going on selling from the stage, you got to be a mind reader. You need already to answer all the questions that the audience will have about your you, your product and service up front and make them part of your presentations and your pitch. So if you have never sold the product one-to-one and you're not good at selling one-to-one, very likely you're going to be rubbish also at selling from the stage because you don't know. You cannot relate to the audience you, and also you will not have the confidence that you need to prove that the product is the right product, that the service is the right service. And what people are looking for in that moment is a, a leader. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's what they're buying. They're not buying the product. They're not buying the service. They're buying your leadership. And as, as soon as you understand this, then it means that uh, you can work on uh, your confidence on stage, the way you deliver, the way you present yourself, the way you present the product, everything will wait, will have a very big defining weight in the complexity of the pitch because selling from the stage is difficult, is not easy. And that's that's the bottom line. You need to have a lot of practice. You need to have the right products. You need to have the right service. Now, there are ways in which you can make it easier for yourself. For if you're starting out and you want to, you are at an event, my recommendation is not to sell a product or a service, but sell an application for people to talk to you. That's way easier and immediately it drops the tension, the fear of rejection. That's what it drops. Because when you are selling, right, you, you are there and in a short space of time, you're asking people to give you a small or a big amount of money. Some of the trainings I do, we sell products for 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 uh, pounds or dollars, depending on the currency. Yeah. So, you know, someone meets me and then they say, oh, give me $20,000. <laughs> I've never seen you for the first time. You need to be really good <laughs> it's like for, for me to say, yeah, I'm going to give you my money right now. It's not five pounds. It's not five dollars. It's freaking 20,000. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. And yeah, right. So if you're not, if everything is not on point, it's very difficult to have any conversion for anything that costs more than even a thousand dollars. While to build your confidence from the stage and at the same time get opportunity to sell your products and service one-to-one so they can be even more effective and get ready to start selling paid products, whether it's from seminars or webinars, then is make it easy for yourself. Give a great presentation, invite people to fill up an application form that they can have a consultation with you and then sell your product and service one-to-one and use this learning to build a pitch and then test. Now I want to test selling a paid product. Now that I have all this information, all this data, and test it out. And practice, practice, practice. Because when you're practicing, then you already know what you have to say. And you don't disconnect with the audience. Mm. Uh, no, Natasha, have you ever heard some speakers that say, oh, I just want to speak from the heart. I never prepare myself. <laughs> I hear that all the time. Right. <laughs> And I'm like, bullshit, (laughs) you're lazy. That's why I don't want to get ready. (laughs) And I'm not saying that you need to have a script. It's different. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you're talking about. You need to know the flow of the talk. Otherwise, as a speaker, you're going to be all over the place. You will not have a thread. You will just be reactive on what's happening in the room and the question that the audience will ask instead of being in control of the situation. And then most of the time, you will run out of time to pitch any consultationary paid product. Mm -hmm. But if you are prepared, in particular at the beginning and at the end, which are the moments where people struggle the most. The beginning because you are not warmed up. You need to start talking. And the end, because that's the moment where you make the call to action. So if you are prepared in those two parts and you know them by heart, What happens, you can just be focused and speak from the heart at that point (laughs) because the words will 
flow out of you. You don't need to disconnect with the audience and actually the audience will not feel that you, you switch into a different person, into a salesperson, but you can just be who you are, be yourself, know what the heck you're talking about and get those conversions in. Mm, and that makes a big difference. I've, I've been to events where they switch you, you're like you're listening to the speaker and they're like they're really good and they're talking you can tell they're talking from the heart and then all of a sudden it's like a switch has flipped and they're now selling <laughs> yeah and everybody tunes out at that point <laughs> exactly and that's the difference remember there is one thing that i've heard and and i think is very true that people hate to be sold to but they love to buy mm-hmm. and it's true I love to buy stuff. I love to buy stuff even I don't need. Yep. <laughs> I've <have> done that. <laughs> if, I, if I had to see how many handbags my wife has. It's like <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it's watches. Oh, my God. Oh. Give me a watch. Uh, I took about – I was on a cruise with my wife. I took three days shopping for about one, one hour a day to choose my watch. Oh, wow. Yeah, my wife it was the most grueling experience for her. She went to get a cocktail and she said, I'm, I'm, go- I'm leaving you. I'm going to go in the swimming pool. I'm going to get a cocktail. You choose your damn watch. So, <laughs> yeah. so we, we love to buy. We love to buy. And we love to buy in particular from people that make the buying process enjoyable. Mm-hmm. That's a big and one. And that's what you're doing as a presenter. You're making the buying process for the audience enjoyable, fun. You you make it you make them want it, and they will want it, <laughs> and they will want it because you're presenting it in a way that uh, is captivating and is uh, is also sexy, and and that's what they will buy. So when you are selling from the stage, remember also to entertain the audience while you're selling. Don't just turn into this. Uh, um, making a list of all the things that uh, there are in the program so then uh, now you can buy it uh, and you have this discount if you buy today everyone is doing that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> everyone you're no different no can you be- oh yeah it's uh it's def like and it it's getting that like just the like you said practice right getting used to to doing the sale at the end and having that practice and knowing, I like to say knowing the outline. So like you don't need to have like a written out seven page essay on what you're going to say. At least that's, yeah. that's my belief. Uh, but you, you should have an outline uh, and a flow chart of where you're going, what topics you're covering, how like, and, and that way, yeah, you can play with the audience a little bit and you can speak from the heart, but you know where you're going to end up. Uh, exactly you said a magic word you know where you're going to end up and uh, if you know it and the audience knows it then uh, you you and the audience are at the same place the problem happens where your communication or the communication of a speaker is not good enough that deceives the audience mm. and so now the audience uh, is there to expect a talk and suddenly out from the blue, they see the sales pitch that no one saw coming. <laughs> now, a lot of people now expect a sales pitch, in particular if you've been to events before. So it's, it's a bit of a different dynamic. But mm-hmm. there are some people that have never been at events before. And it becomes their very first event. So you have the opportunity to, as a speaker to make them enjoy all the future events or for them to be... Uh, how can I say to be resistant for attending any other <laughs> event in the future <laughs> yeah and it's uh, oh my goodness um, quick story it's very like yeah. so I was at an event in oh my goodness where was it it was in California or something and I went to the it was a $99 ticket to go to this three day conference event and honestly I just wanted to point out like if you're the host or the main key speaker at the event the experience is key for you right like it's it's all about those 3 days experience especially when you're making a large ticket offer at the end of the 3 days mm-hmm. I went with all my barriers up I was like I'm paying for this $99 ticket to go because I want to hang out with like my peers because they were going cuz 
you know, they're going, I might as well go. And I love events. I'm a little bit of an addict. Yeah. And uh, and so I, I got my plane ticket, got my ninety nine dollar ticket, got my hotel, went uh, went to the event. Uh, I even missed the the first VIP night because I wasn't really too excited. I